I have to be honest and say that this weekend, in the last couple of days, I've been sharing with one of the, the other prior priests in the house and one of our deacons how difficult sometimes it is to preach on Good Shepherd Sunday because everything you say sounds so trite. <laughs> because you have to begin always with the usual disclaimers. Right? How many people here have been shepherds? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how many? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Not one? <laughs> See? <laughs> Even me being from rural upstate New York, I think all of my field trips were to dairy cows. <laughs> For some reason, we don't raise sheep up there, I guess, in that area. So most of the little bit that I know is more about dairy cows than sheep. And there's something, too, that we often see as another disclaimer, that, of course, we sophisticated Westerners don't like to be compared to sheep, right? We hear that all the time. It's practically hard to see any commentary on this scripture when, that doesn't begin that way, at least in our part of the world, where we don't have that, that degree of contact with God's creation. And so we begin with those disclaimers. Then as I was reflecting on all of that, I said, that's enough about me. How about Jesus? <laughs> and then things become a little clearer, don't they? <coughs> If we forget about, for the moment, that we don't like to be called sheep and that we don't have a lot of experience of farming and shepherds as Jesus' day, then we get, for me, what struck me between the eyes, we get to the heart of the matter this morning in the Gospel. And for me, the words that jumped out at me after all those disclaimers are these. I am the Good Shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Can our intimacy with God and our knowledge of God get any better than that? That Jesus says that he knows us through and through. He knows us to the degree that he knows the Father, and the Father knows Him. And so we are brought into this deep, almost ocean of intimacy and compassion and relationship with the God who in Christ lays down life for us. The first letter of John would put it this way, see what love God has bestowed on us and letting us be called children of God. No longer do we have a relationship that characterized much of the pagan world where we will have to appease God. We have to make God happy. So the more we do, the better sacrifices we make, the more works that we are enabled to do, God will love us more. And how many in our world carry around still that broken, wounded notion of God? It is certainly not what is revealed in the Word today. I am the Good Shepherd. I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Commentators are quick to point out as well that this knowing is not something like, I know my dry cleaner well, I know my favorite restaurant. <laughs> that this knowledge in the scriptures even borders on a kind of sexual intimacy, that biblical knowing is to have this deep knowledge of the other in true intimacy. And that's what the Good Shepherd shares with us even when we, as sheep, aren't so smart, and when we sin, and when we fail, and we let our wounds show too much, even in that does our God love us so deeply and intimately. The Good Shepherd, or better, in the word that's used in the original, 
the noble shepherd, the true shepherd, the beautiful shepherd even, or as our opening prayer says, the brave shepherd. The noble, the brave, the beautiful, the true shepherd is the one who lays down life for us. Whether we relate to shepherds and shepherding or not, Ezekiel and many of the prophets who went before in Israel's history, they knew that human shepherds fail too often. And so they speak eloquently and beautifully of this longing first for God to have a true shepherd after God's own heart. And then at some point the prophets even say, God is not in his overflowing love and mercy, is not happy enough with that. And God says, I want to be their shepherd. I myself will be their shepherd. I will guide and pasture them. And so what does God do in that great love and mercy? The word, the shepherd, becomes flesh. Is what we celebrate in these Easter days. <clears throat> And it is out of this great intimacy with this divine shepherd who gives life for us that we speak on behalf of those who have no voice. It's out of this deep intimacy and this oneness with God that we become the voice for justice. We become the instruments of God's peace. We become those who speak the truth in love to a world which is full of many voices and much noise we become the clear voice that speaks from the intimacy of knowing how deeply and how powerfully God loves us and calls us God's own. We can't, have, we can't get it any better than that. We can't get any better. This period of Easter is often called the period of mystagogy, from the word that for the newly baptized, as they are, as the word says, are led more deeply into the mystery. And who leads us in the, in, more deeply into this mystery in these Easter days? It's often the Gospel of John. And all of the images that are lovingly thrown at us in the liturgy each weekend speak to us of that deep intimacy that God desires in this new life of the risen Christ. Bread of life, vine and branches, good shepherd who knows us even better than we know ourselves. We are asked in this Easter season to allow ourselves to be loved by so great a shepherd, to be led by so great a shepherd. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that always on this Good Shepherd Sunday, it's Vocations Sunday. It's a day when people throughout our church are praying for the gift of vocations not only to this Carmel, but to our own religious families and to our archdiocese and dioceses, wherever we come from, we are praying for all kinds of shepherds to hear that voice of the one who loves them so intimately and so deeply, and to have the courage, the bravery, just like the noble shepherd, to be able to say yes to God's call. As Pope Francis is fond of saying, praying for shepherds who smell like their sheep. <laughs> praying for shepherds who are shepherds after God's own heart. The Word made flesh. God's own heart made flesh in Jesus. Now risen and full of life that can't end.